Do you want to upgrade your 3D theater from this small thing with only 20 seats to a giant megaplex that can serve hundreds of guests? Well, in this episode of Open RCT2 Tutorials, I'm going to show you a new way to build theaters and cinemas featuring stadium seating and unlimited capacity. So grab some popcorn, sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. So to start, we need to know how large we want the theater to be. So I'm going to make a three by three tile theater with tiered seating here. Now you have to understand that each tile is gonna be one set of seats. So we have three tiles per row, and then I actually want a row in between each of these. So it will be five rows total. So that would be 15 sets of seats. So now we're gonna use the vertical drop coaster, although it doesn't really matter. And you want it to be facing the direction the seats will be facing. So that arrow is pointing out. And now I'm going to build the entrance and exit. And I'm gonna hide those so it's easier to see. And then now when choosing how many seats, it's not gonna let us do it right now because I need to update the cheats. So we need to turn on show all operating modes, allow arbitrary ride type changes, show vehicles from other track types and disable vehicle limits. And then now I can update this to 15 sets of seats. So 15 cars with just one train, that's what I want. Now here's an optional trick that I showed in my last video about enabling single riders. But if we choose the jet skis here, it's gonna still be 15 cars per train with a nice stat boost, but it is going to allow for single riders as well. So now I'm going to try and open the ride, but it won't let us. So we need to change the operating mode to one of the 3D film modes, like the mouse tails or something, or space raiders. And now we can go and test the ride to spawn the vehicles, but they're gonna show up all bunched up since there's no room on the track for all of them, but they're there. Now at this point, if you change the operating mode, the vehicles will disappear. So it is important at this stage that you have the correct operating mode selected. Now with the vehicle spawned, it's not going to generate any stats because it's still a roller coaster. So we can change it to the 3D theater and it will update the stats to 3D theater stats with a nice bonus from the jet ski modifiers. But we want these to look like seats. So if you use the edit ride vehicles plugin, the link is in the video description below if you don't have it, but I'm going to select the ride by clicking on the train. And now we can change the visuals to the six seater twister trains. And then we need to apply that to all of the vehicles. So all vehicles on this train hit apply and they are all gonna show up as the seating that we want, as you can see here. And then now, we can actually use the picker over here on the left and move vehicle one to wherever we'd like. As you can see, it isn't exact. It kind of moves a little bit sometimes on the square, but you wanna try and get it right smack in the middle where it doesn't move anymore. And then we are going to go to vehicle two and do the same thing using the picker and move it right next to it. And then if we go back to vehicle one, we can look at the Y and Z positions and notice their numbers. And then if we go to vehicle two, it's the same. So they're on the same Y axis and the same height on the Z axis. Now I can add vehicle three to the top of the row and it is at the same Y and Z positions, which is what we want. And I'm going to quickly add the next row, but we need to move it back. So if we look at vehicle three at the top corner, we can see the Y and Z positions. And then if we go down to vehicle four, the Y and Z positions have changed. So if you do the math and subtract those and then divide it by two, that will create our middle row. So for the Z position, we are going to raise it up eight units because it was 144 minus 128, that's 16 divided by two. So that's eight units is the midway point for that row. And then if we do the same thing for the Y position, we actually need to move the vehicles back by 16 units. And that is the halfway point between those two rows, which will create our middle row. So I'm gonna do that for each of these vehicles and move them back 16 units. And now we have our new row. So I can go to vehicle seven and place that and create our middle row. And you actually saw the, the ride start a new cycle. And now I'm going to do the bottom row, but this one we also have to move up eight units and back 16 for each vehicle. So I'm doing that quickly now, and it's kind of overlapping on the other vehicles, but now I can move those and finish out the last row with vehicles 13, 14, 15. And now we have our stadium seating. 
and then you can change the colors like making the restraints invisible if you select colors here and hit apply it will only update the colors for each vehicle let's give it some nice dark red seats you can also go into the paint here and manually update the colors and it will override the plug-in colors however the jet skis only give you two colors and the plug-in will give you all three of the color schemes for that vehicle so you can mess around with that. And then now I'm going to move the entrance and exit buildings using the tile inspector. So I'm gonna copy the exit building, paste it here, click make usable, delete the old one. And then I'm going to move the entrance as well. I suppose I could have just put the station right in the middle and avoided all of this. And now here is the entrance and exit path. And it looks like I need to use the tile inspector because the entrance building needs to be below the track. That's why the Q path wasn't connecting. And now I can make the entrance and exit buildings invisible once more. And I'm going to lower the land now and build some paths underneath the seats to make it kind of look like a staircase in the theater. And then now I'm going to make a very crude theater building. I'm sure you guys can do a much better job than I'm doing right now, but this is just for the sake of the example, but quite an ugly theater. And now you can see the guests getting on the ride and they are loving that stadium seating. Lots of options for everyone to sit. And it looks like our jet ski trick is enabling single riders. And here it looks like we have our 31st rider. So it is allowing us to have odd number of riders. And then the harness is closed and they are enjoying their film. I upgraded the facade, but it is still very hideous. But there are other ways you can use this trick. So if you wanted to make the vehicle something different, we could try the floorless trains, and then I can apply this to all of the vehicles, and they look a little bit different. You can change the coloring and things like that. So if you don't want the six-seater trains, you can try the floorless trains. And you can even go beyond that and try other ideas like the spinning wild mouse cars. I think these kind of make it look like a dinner theater or something where they have these nice cozy seats. So there are a lot of different possibilities, including these inverted hairpin coaster trains that kind of give it a soaring vibe. You could also change them to the regular inverted coaster trains and I can apply that to all of them. And now they are gonna look a little bit different, kind of like little mini hang gliders. So definitely a neat trick for different theater types. I even experimented with this recreation of Intamin's Dome Theater that is at SeaWorld Abu Dhabi, which features a ring of seats. Now this was tricky to build. You actually need to make track for all of the different angles you want the seats to be at. So I'll show you here really quickly. So basically, once you've spawned your vehicles, you go into the Edit Ride Vehicles plugin and select the ride, and then move the vehicle using the track progress here forward till you find the angle that you want the vehicle to appear in. So this curve is actually 66 units here. As you can see here, 66 units is the length of the curve in terms of track progress. So halfway is 33. So that's gonna be our 45 degree angle. And with the picker tool, we can move it wherever we'd like. And then I can do the same thing with vehicle two. So go to that 33 track progress, and then I can move it. But you can see with the tiles, it's not gonna line up perfectly. So what you have to do is then use the X and Y positioning to move it along those axis to get it correctly positioned wherever you'd like. This is kind of tedious to get it to connect the way I want it to look for this example. So it's not ideal but you can definitely make it work. So here it looks pretty close to lined up. Now, if I want to move the next vehicle and have that be straight and not in an angle, again, it's not gonna line up correctly in the center of the tile. So then I would have to use the X or Y positioning to line it up however I want it to look. So basically with this method, you have that circular piece of track. So you can have a vehicle at any angle you want, really. And then you can place it wherever you'd like. And with the X, Y, and Z positions, you could move it to basically any shape you want. You could build a theater or grandstands or an arena. So I am looking forward to seeing what types of theaters, cinemas, or new types of rides you guys come up with using this method. It definitely allows you to build much more realistic 3D theaters and at whatever size, shape, and capacity you'd like. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments and be sure to give this video a like. It definitely helps out this channel.
and make sure to subscribe because next time I'm going to be showing you the absolute easiest way to build one of these Larson loop rides, also known as the Fireball Super Loop or Ring of Fire. So stay tuned for more.